Welcome to the Character Chronicles, the people show. Checking the pulse of Husker Nation, brought to you by DPS Concrete Construction. Check them out at dpsconstruction.net. Ladies and gentlemen, just how good can Dylan Riola really be? Now, we had a former player's practice along with the coach's clinic this past Saturday. I know that doesn't mean a bunch of former players got together and practiced because when I told one person it was a former player's practice, that's what they thought. No, they formally invited, invited all former Nebraska football players back to watch the practice on Saturday, I got to see him up close and personal, along with the entire team, along with a bunch of other former, a bunch of current players on the Nebraska football roster. Here's what I can tell you from seeing him up close and personal. We kind of already knew this, all right? But I'm just going to say it. His ceiling, just as far as his ceiling, by the time he's done here at Nebraska, potentially, is as high as Tommy Frazier, Eric Crouch, All-American quarterback Steve Taylor, etc. Now, to be clear, this is a 17, 18-year-old kid. Okay, this is a true freshman who's never taken a snap in a game. Obviously, a lot of improvement still needs to take place. I'm not trying to put any pressure on him, but I just, I call it like I see it. Okay, there's a potential that he doesn't even start this year because he's not technically the starting quarterback. So there's a lot of variance in here. I'm just telling you his ceiling, his potential, and what I saw up close and person. Because when you see things on film, it's one thing. When you see it up close and personal, it's another thing. Okay. Now, to be clear, there's a reason, okay, I don't think I'm knocking down any doors with this, because there's a reason he's Nebraska's highest rated recruit ever. Now, we're going to put a tweet up on the screen right here, right now, thank you to my wonderful wife, Angie, for helping me behind the scenes, as she always does, makes the show look better than it really is, so thank you very much, Angie. Here's the tweet, okay, basically the tweet says that Dylan Raiola is projected to be the ninth best quarterback in the Big Ten out of 18 teams going into the football season this fall. Now, Corn Craze, Connor Hayden put out a video oh, a month or two ago where, and I forget exactly where he rated Dylan, but he said he projected him to be one of the top 10 quarterbacks in the Big Ten Conference, again, out of 18 teams this fall. Now, it's interesting because Skurs News quoted this, and we're going to put that tweet up on Twitter. Follow them on Twitter as well. We're going to put that tweet up on the screen. Follow them on Twitter as well. And here's what they said, and I quote, Dylan at nine seems fair for never playing a college snap. End quote. I agree. You know, there's a bit of a guessing game in here. High ceiling, not a lot of experience, you don't know. Seems fair. I agree. Now, Mike Minter, he gave his early review of Dylan Raiola, okay? there was, Again, there was that coach's clinic. He was back for the former players' practice as well. He's now coach Mike Minter, I should add, as well. But here's what he had to say, and I quote, He's the type of quarterback that comes around once every 20 years, end quote. Here's another quote. Two weeks in, he's doing things that some guys in the NFL can't even do, end quote. Now, before we play this 52-second clip... Okay, from his longer interview, go check it out, that he did on The Captain, a 93.7 The Ticket with Vershawn Jackson, Terrell Farley, and my man Jake, my two-time national champion, Nebraska Football Hall of Famer, and a former second-round pick in the NFL draft. Okay, before I play that clip, if some of the things that you're hearing, and again, this isn't Kool-Aid, because again, in my opinion, we don't even know if he's going to start. I know he's a projected starter. I know that's what everyone thinks. Okay, and I'm going to talk about dying on that hill in a minute here in just a minute. But if what you're hearing so far, very early on, with a lot of time to go and a lot of proven left to be made, but if it makes you more optimistic for Nebraska's football season this upcoming fall, then smash that like button. And if you have not yet done so, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the content we hear, we have here on the Character Chronicles. All right, so here is a 52-second clip, okay, again, from the Captain Show with Rashawn Jackson, Terrell Farley, my man Jake on 93.7 The Ticket. Check out this 52-second clip, and then later on, if you want to, check out the full interview. Roll the tape. When... When you look at Dylan, you're looking at, um, you know, a quarterback that kind of come around once every 20 years. Mm. And this is a kid I'm looking at, I don't know how old he is, 17, 18 years old. And and he is already directing things that a 17, 18-year-old kid should not even know. So as, as the as understanding the position and what it takes to get your teammates involved and changing the line protection. Okay, guys, I don't know where we've been two weeks of practice. I, I think I was able to see the, you know, the second week and um, this guy's able to do that. Come on, man. It, we got guys in the national football league that can't do that. Now, clearly Husker legend, Mike Minter thinks a lot of Dylan Raiola already in these very early stages. Now, my takeaway from seeing 
things up close of practice. And to be clear, I'm not going to talk about X's and O's. I'm not going to talk about anything that I shouldn't. Yeah, there's a plethora of things I know uh, from Nebraska football over the past 20 to 25 years that people would find very, very interesting. Over time, I'll gradually share some that are appropriate. Anything not appropriate, I won't. And to be clear, the coaches, you know, they are very protective. The current coaches are very protective of certain things, and rightfully so. Okay. And basically, all right, they treat almost everybody the same across the board. And so what I'm going to share here is just my personal takeaway from seeing him up close and personal. Now, what I saw here, my three takeaways. Number one, he looks the part. Okay. The way he carries himself, his body language, his demeanor, okay, he looks the part. Then you look at his, his physical appearance, his frame, his size. He looks every bit 6'3 and 220 pounds, okay? Sometimes they list a guy at 220, but he's maybe really 202. Okay, he looks 6'3, 220. Okay, I, I'll never forget Robert's rookie year in D.C., Robert Griffin III, RG3, when he set the league on fire, won Offensive Rookie of the Year, the whole read option thing brought to the NFL for the first time, and then he threw, completed like 75% of his passes. He was listed at 6'2", 213. Now, I'll be honest with you. He always looked to me more like 210, 205. So that's a guy that was in the NFL. Dylan's obviously a true freshman, all right? But he looks the part, and he's only 17 or 18 years old. Now, number two, he definitely has that elite, elite arm talent that we've heard so much about that you've seen on film. It's different when you see it up close in person, though. It's definitely there. Number three, Coach Minter's right. Uh, from what I saw, and I'm not going to pretend like I know every single play call. I'm not going to pretend like I know everything that they're doing in every practice, especially the tempo they try to go with. It's hard to keep up with every single thing. I'm not going to pretend like I do. But it's easy to see a couple of things. Number one, he's 100% doing things just a couple of weeks into spring practice. From the mental side of the game, as far as adjustments and protections and things of that nature, that older people don't do, older kids don't do, okay, that older players don't do. And certainly you wouldn't expect from an individual who could technically still be in high school right now. The other thing I noticed, let's be fair. This isn't all just Kool-Aid, Valley Full of Daisies, and Kits and Rear Ends here. That's not how I roll. Okay? Uh, it's just my truth. Whether it's positive, whether someone takes it as negative, whatever it is. But here's the other side of the coin, because I did see some very simple mistakes that were made as well. You know, a guy who's still getting his footing underneath him... It's, it's, it's not a shocker that you would see things like this very, very early on as well. So there's a learning, growing, developing, improvement process, as we know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about the other two quarterbacks in that room really, really quick as well. All right, but real quick, this show is brought to you by DPS Concrete Construction, your local concrete experts. Check them out at dpsconstruction.net. If you're a diesel mechanic, CDL driver, concrete finisher, looking for work in the Omaha metro area, DPS Construction is the employer for you. Again, check them out at dpsconstruction.net. Now, once again, don't forget, we still have two quarterbacks on this roster at this moment in time as well. Nothing can be assumed. Nothing can be predetermined. This isn't pro wrestling, okay? Although pro wrestling is no more predetermined than that TV show or movie you're going to watch at some point this week or weekend. <clears throat> Just putting that out there. All right, I don't care. Also, I should mention, I don't mind. All right, if I'm on this hill that I'm on all alone, okay, it, 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 nobody's going to say there shouldn't be a quarterback battle. It should, the position shouldn't be earned, okay? The position should just be handed to, to some quarterback, Dylan Raiola or someone else. Nobody's going to say that. And I'm not saying anyone is saying that. But I do feel like 90% of the people I talk to are like, Dylan's the guy, he's going to be the starting quarterback. So it does kind of feel predetermined, in my opinion, what I am saying, and the hill I'm talking about, and the hill I don't mind being alone on if I'm all alone, and I'll gladly die all alone on this hill if I have to, it's okay. All I'm saying is nothing should be predetermined. It should be a wide open quarterback battle, and that position should be earned. No pro wrestling predetermination, TV show, movie predetermination going on here. Wide open battle. Obviously, I think a lot of Dylan Ryan's potential. But let's talk about the other two quarterbacks as well. Okay, here's two clips of Daniel Kalen via Matt McMaster. It's on Twitter, so it's already public. Maybe you've already seen it. Of two absolute dimes. The Danny Dimes Daniel Kalen threw in practice to Isaiah Nair and Jamal Banks. Check out those two clips.
Now, Huskers Game Day on Twitter, okay, quote tweeted this and said, and I quote, does Nebraska have a quarterback controversy? Based on what you've seen, who should take the first snap against UTEP? End quote. My answers to those two questions are yes, because we should have a quarterback battle. Number two, I have no idea yet. It's way too early on. All right, now, very early on, in a short amount of time, Daniel Kalen, he reminds me just a bit, just the way he's conducted himself, he's conducted himself with class, the way he conducted himself as a recruit being signed since he's been signed, okay, just a bit, uh, a Brooke Beringer to a degree. And I've talked about some of this in the past, so bear with me as I bring it up again real quick. Number one, when the quarterback position became open in our last year's recruiting class, he immediately decommitted from Missouri, who, by the way, was 11-win team, top 10 team, won a New Year's Six bowl game, a football program that's ahead of Nebraska right now, to get decommitted immediately and came to Nebraska. Then he helped peer recruit a large portion of this past year's recruiting class. And then when Dylan Riola committed to Nebraska, a guy who is, like I said, a higher rated commit because he's the highest rated recruit slash commit Nebraska's had of all time. Dylan had other offers, but he stays with Nebraska knowing the type of hype that's around D Dylan. And I'm so happy they're both here, to be clear. But so far, all Daniel does, from what I see and what I've heard from people around the program as well, much like the other quarterbacks, but all he does is work his butt off. He doesn't complain. Outside of practice, doesn't hardly say a word. Conducts himself with class. And to be clear, on, on the football side of things, I was not one bit surprised to see some of these passes, these dimes he was dropping in practice. Now, Daniel, 6'3", 210 pounds. It's very early on, and obviously it's been a very short amount of time so far, but it's hard not to root for a guy like Daniel Kalen. I, I did forget to mention this real quick, just going back to Dylan. His last three years of high school, and I mentioned this a long time ago, but I came across this, these two stats again today, and they're just really impressive. Keep in mind that this is obviously versus high school, which is very, very different than the Big Ten Conference, as we all know. But you just, you never know what you're going to get from a true freshman. But regardless of high school competition, Big Ten competition, these two stats are pretty impressive. Okay, because Dylan's last three years of high school, he threw 88 touchdowns, only 11 interceptions. And his senior year of high school, he threw 34 touchdowns to only one interception. That's a touchdown to interception ratio that is exceptional. I just, it stood out to me once again. Now, the last quarterback I'm going to talk about, not, certainly not last but not least, okay? Because dare I say, depending on who the starting quarterback is this year, I could argue maybe, just maybe, one of the most important players on the entire team regardless is Heinrich Harburg, and here's why. He's the only guy on the team that can explain to the two true freshmen if one of them starts, okay, what it's like to actually be a starting quarterback in Nebraska. He's the only guy who's been there and done that. Number two, if he doesn't start a quarterback, Harburg can have his own package and unique set of plays using his arm and his legs, which our other two quarterbacks are not currently known for, to give opposing defenses more things they have to prepare for and worry about. Also, it gives opposing defenses more to get ready for, while it also shrinks the playbook for the two young freshman quarterbacks as they learn, grow, and develop. Okay, if Harburg isn't the starter, but the starter is struggling in a game, you can always bring in Heinrich into the game to shake things up and give the starting quarterback, okay, some time to gather himself if necessary, okay, then bring the starter back in when he's ready, okay? Harburg, no matter what, could be a very important player on this team next year. Now, to be clear, okay, Dylan's ceiling is very high indeed. Personally, I just want to see him get better every day, and I'm frankly looking forward to that process like everyone else is and watching it play out. For this year, I'd really just be happy with better overall quarterback play than we had last year. That's really it. Take care of the ball. Do the simple little things. Complete a few more passes. Okay. And I'd be happy with that. That's really all I'm looking for. So here are my questions for your fine folks at home. Let me know your responses in the comments below, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. For the first couple questions, just simply say yes or no. Number one, do you agree? Would you be happy with simply just better overall quarterback play this last year? doesn't have to be anything crazy. Is that all you're looking for, or are you looking for more, yes or no? Number two, will we get better quarterback play this year than last year, yes or no? Number three, wh who will be our top wide receiver this year? Jamal Banks, Isaiah Nair, Malachi Coleman, or Jalen Lloyd? Our quarterbacks need some help, right? Also, I will put out that top five newcomers to the Nebraska football team, okay, video, next week unless something else comes up that I want to talk about in the meantime because I've teased that in the past. Until next time, go Big Red and always remember to throw the bug.